So, good evening, welcome. I'm so glad you're here, we're so glad you stayed. I am Abra Johnson of Honey Pot Performance. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming to the Love Dancing, uh, documenting Chicago's Nightlife exhibit. So we want to remind everyone, and I'm going to step out the way, uh, that we have these QR codes all around the room. We really want you to complete our little survey. So that survey is critical to the funding that we get to produce events like this. So tell us a little bit about who you are, what you think of the event. That's basically the QR code. So before you leave here today, my second reminder is to invite you back tomorrow. So tomorrow we're actually doing the archiving day event where we want you to bring your party items, your outfits, your pictures, your flyers, um, your pictures of yourself in pictures. So <laughs> even if you bring the clothes that you had a good sweaty old time in, we're archiving those too. So we're taking pictures, we're digitizing whatever you bring in and making it a part of the archive. Um, come ready to be interviewed. Tell us about your favorite spots, your favorite parties. Um, so we're trying to expand this archive to make sure that we tell the story of nightlife, of house music across the city of Chicago. Um, so don't forget our QR codes. They work. They're on signs. They're on the screen. Um, so that's really important to us. Now we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to start by introducing Mario Smith, um, and then he's going to introduce the panel. So if you guys don't know Mario, the mayor. He should. The mayor of Hyde Park. Right, the mayor of Hyde Park, that's what we call him. Uh, Mario has been I, on Milwaukee. I am not the mayor of anything. <laughs> I'm just going to say Mario has been on Milwaukee since we were teenagers. I'm just going to throw that on out here. So if you guys are not familiar with Literary Explosion, which used to be where the Starbucks is right there on the corner of Damon North Avenue of Milwaukee. Uh, it was called Lidax. It was a bookstore slash basement open mic um, that is legendary for a certain generation of us in Chicago. Uh, and Mario was one of the innkeepers, right? And Tina Howell, if you guys um, know her as well. Uh, okay, so Mario, Chicago poet, educator, producer, and radio chat host. Mario is the host, executive producer of News from the Service Entrance on WLPNLP here in Chicago, and the host of the Silver Room's randomly selected podcasts. His poetry appears in the books Power Lines, A Decade of Poetry from Chicago's Guild Complex, and The Breakbeat Poets by Haymarket Press. Welcome, Mario. We're so glad to see you here. I definitely have to meet this Mario person. He sounds so interesting. He does a lot of things. Thank you all for coming. Y'all don't know what, what, what uh, Abra went through to get here today, so can we give her a nice round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. You may know, though, she put it on Facebook. It wasn't like it was a secret, but it, you know what I'm saying. She went through some, there's a child name. She went through some doo-doo to get here. Doo-doo. Um, it is an honor uh, to be, um, Back in Wicker Park, it's an honor to be here today. Dwayne Powell, killing it on the ones and twos. Y'all give it up for Dwayne. Yeah. Um, real briefly, before I introduce everybody, and I promise this will be brief, I hung out in Wicker Park. I think it was a seven-year period where I was here every day. I didn't live in Wicker Park. And we were here every day doing stuff at LitX and in the neighborhood and at Guild Complex. And, and I'm scared to death of Wicker Park. I feel like I landed in the middle of a dream that I cannot wake myself out of. It is horrifying what they did to this neighborhood. It is horrifying what they've done to the artists that used to be in this neighborhood that were a staple of Wicker Park. There was in a time that you couldn't walk down Milwaukee. Dwayne is my witness, and a few other folks in here know what I'm about to say. You'd see Jesse De La Pena, Design, Nacrobats, Timbuktu, <laughs> and then you might see some folks from out of town, Erica Badu could be walking down the street because her cousin lived here and we're, it's that. And to walk out today, I'm just stunned and I pray for this neighborhood, man, and the artists that are left. Uh, gentrification is real and that shit is running wild like Hulkamania. So if you don't know, now you do. And um, pray for the people in Wicker Park. They don't, they don't know it yet, but they're going to need it, I think. Um, I would like to introduce our, damn, that was deep, wasn't it? I, I didn't try and do all that. 
Um, I'd like to introduce our panelists on the Documenting Nightlife panel. Uh, first is Shay Turner. Um, I, I have something to say. I'm going to say it. Looking at her photograph, I'm not, I'm not even going to read this paper. Looking at her photographs, I kept going, and maybe you know it too, I kept looking at these pictures, and like there's a familiarity, and I can't place it. And I figured out what it was. Those aren't digital photos. Those photos have a lot of energy in them. And a lot of, they, they, if you are old enough to remember the point and shoot Polaroid pictures that you used to take, or even older than that, when you had to snatch them bad boys out of the side. Um, those pictures, when they capture pictures or, or memories of your family or your friends, those things resonate forever. And I, I like to think that her work has that same effect. She's capturing a movement in our city, and she's really capturing it at the, the gut bucket roots part of it. And um, I love your work. And I, I cannot wait to see more of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Shay Turner. Yeah. 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 On the far end, Kimon Kindred is just a bad man. If you're hungry, he will go home and cook. <laughs> If you need a ride, the brother will grab you and scoop you up. And if you at a party, he's chick 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 chick. I'm like, damn, come on! I was just going. I'm walking. Chick 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 chick. Shut up. <laughs> he is a he is a, a great documentarian of the party scene in our city. He has. I'm in a lot of those pictures, but there's some amazing photos capturing action as it happens. He is one of the best, if not the very best, in our town at doing that. And I am glad that he is here today, ladies and gentlemen. Can you can do it? And Sean Lynn, um, another one of these dudes that is a, a phenomenal person and a far better person than a photographer, and he's an amazing photographer. Um, but he is a great person. What? Did I lie? He's a phenomenal person. And he's a hell of a photographer, but he's a much better man than he is a photographer. Um, I don't understand why that's funny. <laughs> Even the kid is laughing. <laughs> I've messed this whole thing up. Anyway, um, seen as an amazing uh, sense of being able to capture a person right at the perfect moment. His portraits are n next level, otherworldly stuff. He is a great, great photographer. And uh, he also will catch you at a party and you'll be like, damn, you, I, I saw the picture you took. I didn't even know you took it. That's how good he is. He is really, really good at his job. Ladies and gentlemen, C. Lynn. All right. I'm sorry I didn't read any of it after I promised you I'd read it. Hey, that's why I'm holding this mic so it can be heard loud. Um, I will ask Shay first. First, thank you, and and thank you for your work. Um, I mentioned that you are capturing a movement in its moment. Was that always your intention to shoot with a 35 millimeter as opposed to uh, using di the, the digital equipment? Um, yeah, is this on? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, I pretty much always shot film. Um, I used to go to like CVS, Walgreens and get like the disposables and I just used to carry them around. I would say from like 16 on, I'm almost 21. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's something very intentional. I kind of just like the grain and the, the look and how timeless it is. Uh, I just remember always, like, seeing my grandma take pictures with disposables just to capture the moment, and then she put it right back in her purse. But I think, yeah, it's just like a, the being present in the moment. Like, I, I can just keep it around my neck, and I can be involved and, just like, very much, yeah, but just present in the moment. And I think there's nothing that really captures a moment, like film particularly. Like, there's just, there's just something about it. So yeah, it's always been intentional. I don't think I really like digital. I like the way it looks. Um, but it, with my work specifically, I will just always shoot film. When I, you said CVS, and I thought you meant the greatest high school ever. <laughs> <laughs> but clearly, you were talking about the pharmacy. Um, when I was in high school, I, I learned how to develop film. And I thought that that was the coolest thing ever because if you took the picture, you got a chance to actually birth 
the photo. Is that the same kind of thing you get with the 35 mm Yeah, I just learned how to develop film, like not even two days ago, actually. I was, I was, yeah. I was, it's, I a, it's a terrible uh, smell, but it, you'll get like used to it. It's a really tedious, long process, and yeah. I was just in there by myself. It was dark. I was like, this is something that I can really get into. But before then, I would like send my photos to my friend, <laughs> and they would develop them, and I would just be so jealous of the whole process of them. Like, they basically know my whole life, and they don't, we don't really talk. Like, this is my film guy but they've seen every like, thing dating from now until what 2017 so yeah it's just I'm very jealous of that process it's something I want to pick up to do which I, I will. and I'm going to try to remember the answers of all three of you but when you are at a party and you have your camera Let's say, for example, your favorite DJ, whoever they might be, is spinning. Do you have an intention that night, like, okay, I know I came here to party, but I got this camera. What are you looking at, and what are you looking for when you take your picture? Oh, I you. Think it's oh. <laughs> I don't think it's really anything. Really. Like, I just love to dance, and I love to go out, and I love good music. And I just happen to bring my camera, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I at least want to document my time and existence here so I remember it and I have like proof of it when I'm like 50 years old but if I forget to take a photo you that just means sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm a young kid it's okay <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's all right. And, and, yeah, you'll be 50 one day. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Um, uh, and see, now I'll, I'll just go in order. See, uh, same thing. When you're when you're at a party or at an event and you're capturing that moment, you're in the middle of it. And I I've seen this with you. You're a dancing machine, and you are dancing all over the place. Do you? <laughs> I know the answer. The answer is yes. Do you ever forget that you have your camera that you need to take a picture? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen it. That's why. I, yeah. I mean, and then I, I'm the one always at the party. My flash flies off the camera. Batteries <laughs> spill onto the floor. People kick my batteries. And I'm, you know, it's just you know, I don't know, vocational hazard. Um, but I think because one of the things that I I, I photograph are uh, states of change, states of love, states of liberation. Um, it's important that I view us from within that state, not observing it, not outside of it. To me, that's kind of what the definition of gaze is, like just this pure observational quality, and it reads, um, I think, especially in images, and especially in images of black people, because I think you know when it's from us by us. I think you just mm -hmm. feel that there's a love and there's a care and an intention in it versus something that feels like you're being viewed through through bars, yeah. you know? Um, so my, my intention is never to, to view us, but to feel us, to see us, to be us. So I am a, a dancing fool when I'm out there. Oh, yes. And very much trying to be in that state of love and in that state of liberation and to transmit that direct line into anyone that would view or experience the work. And I know that I, I, I think about Traveling Mercies, your, your, your exhibit that you had up for a while at, at Silver Room and other places around our fair town. Um, what is the difference in shooting that, something like that, and shooting a party or portraits even? I work so hard at good questions, bro. <laughs> you have no idea how much I've just been studying the three of you the last 24 hours. <laughs> I'm, my head hurts from studying. So, I'll first talk about how they're similar. So I think when I'm, when I'm shooting um, work that I think belongs in that collection of Travel Mercies that is similar and that I have to be in that um, that state. Y'all ever notice that y'all like have different thoughts or experience life or time differently when you're in motion? Yeah. Like when you're on a train or when you're on a plane. Um, sometimes even when you're in the shower you think or feel differently or you start hitting the notes you couldn't hit when you were dry. <laughs> <laughs> dry and ashy. I should add that. <laughs> Someone is ashy tonight. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with like um, 
our consciousness and how our consciousness shifts when we embody or inhabit um, different states. So the, the mercy's work is when I'm in that state of movement and reflection. You know, so there's always writing that accompanies that. I'm not always moved to write when I think about the work that I'm shooting, um, <clears throat> you know, through the dance scene. And I'm, I'm kind of calling that Black Holiday, like a collection of, you know, um, you know, dance images, and, you know, whether it's Afro-Latin, whether it's house music. Um, I'm, at the, I'm obsessed with the skating rink right now, and that's mm. part of Black Holiday. Mm. Um, but again, like love, liberation, these are the, the, the through lines. Um, and they all have like a score and a soundtrack to me. Um, but this work, I don't hear it in text in the same way that I hear, or maybe the music is the text, the soundtrack and the soundscaping is, is the text. But for me, with Traveling Mercies, it's, it's definitely more of like my literal voice coming through, which is why I did the postcards, you know, because I wanted to give people a few words um, to help them to find their own, you know, so they kind of operate it as prompts in that. And real quick, when you, and you travel a bit, yeah. is that the same philosophy for whatever party you go to? And if you're like at a party that is just hot garbage, <laughs> do you find that light still somewhere within that party? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, um, it's my, my, my mentor, my woman tour, Linda Paris Bailey, um, she taught us young, it's, it's all about relationships. So I have to ask, what is my relationship um, to the party? Mm. You know, what is my relationship to the people in the party, the revelers, the party goers, the, the, the sound engineers, you know, the, the, the tastemakers, the people that make the party uh, come alive. And there's, even if it's not the thing I expected it to be, there's usually a relationship, there's usually a connection in that space that I can just be curious about. And, you know, my curiosity is, is extended through it's extended through my lens. Um, and I even find ways verbally, non-verbally, um, to kind of make that contact, you know, so that, again, I'm not just gazing and viewing people, but that I'm, you know, that's what the dance is, too. The dance is, hello, you know, hey, how you do? You know, you know what I'm saying? With my feet, my body, my shoulders, my wink, the way I laugh, is something they do. One of my favorite things to do is to walk up to you in the party and mirror the dance that you're doing, mm -hmm. which is my way of saying, I see, see you. you. Yeah. yeah, I see you. I see your movement, and I'm like, you know, and there's nothing more Pisces than that. You know? <laughs> 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 Hello, I'm you. Meet yourself. You know? Yeah. And yeah. You, know, you look like this. That is accurate. Yeah. That's screamingly accurate. It's extremely you Pisces folks, boy. Uh, we can't move to make it even worse. I, 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 before we, before we, before we, <laughs> before we veer too far away, I just want to make a quick uh, statement. As a Cancerian, we also will walk up on a Cancer and be like, "I know you." To a person we've never met before, once we find out they're a Cancer, like, "Man, I know all your." Oh God, are you all right? It's a lot. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. I told you get it uh, all the time, all the time. It's just a thing we do. We're, never, I'm not going to say it. Um, Mr. Kendrick, sir, I have uh, had, the, had the, I'm acting like I don't know any of you. I've had, the, I, um, I've had the pleasure of being with you on some of your recognizance missions, like when we were putting the Frederick Douglass signs out for Watch. Shout out Wide Awake Chicago. We were putting the signs out on Stony. Shout out to White Awake, that's right. Um, we put the big pick in Inglewood a couple summers ago, and and I saw the pictures that you guys took, and I was like, damn, that that is that's it. It captured that moment in Inglewood during this, COVID. During COVID, with this gigante pick just screaming at everybody that goes past it, like, <laughs> yo, and it, it, it those pictures meant everything. Um, but I've seen your party pictures too. You will be at a party and you will take, how many pictures do you think on average you take at a party? A million. <laughs> a million billion. Black people. You gotta use your mic because they're gonna oh, get mad yeah, at you. Yeah. I don't need people that. yelling at me. I ain't got my, my loop yet. Can you guys do okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, black people in particular, but people in general move and they move faster than most people on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. So there must be some extra shutter allowance. <laughs> <laughs>
You the Shutter King, though. You be Shutter. It's, 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 oh, it's man. the camera. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it as fast as my brain can see it. And damn it, you missed it again. You you do something really unique too. You you don't sneak up on folks, but you kind of appear, and then you're like pow 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 pow. And these images that you catch, you catch. I see pictures you taking a seat. Where you catch just like these movements, like the the most intricate part of the movements that people are doing. What kind of focus is that from your eye? How are you how are you registering that with your being able to shoot that? If you understand what I'm saying. Yep, I I think maybe. So um, I try hard. I'm sorry, guy. I'm not shooting film anymore, which is where I started. So you know, hitting the shutter button or leaning a little heavy on it won't cost me as much. Mm -hmm. This film costs money. Um, but a lot of times, I'm kind of sneaking around my friends in a party. <laughs> I, I really am. I'm sneaking around. I'm, and, and forgive this this term. I'm looking for that person with the most banging body. And it's not body as in shape and contour, it's body as in body of movement, body of love, body of joy. And in, in a way, I'll pick a couple of muses or a couple of victims. They're victims if I don't know them, they're muses if I do. Um, and I just watch, I kind of, I kind of, you know, Virgo Nation here. I will, as, as they say in, in the, what is it, the Virgo Lanica constellation, I'm like 10 to the negative 34 billion, yeah. billion level of detail, and I will find that movement, or you won't see the picture. Like, you can hear all the clips you want, but I have sort of a mental algorithm, so on average, I take maybe seven, seven to eight pictures per shot, hmm. per movement, and I have a system that I just kind of roll through it, and I just, I'll see that, that one picture. Mm -hmm. Everything goes in the dump. Sometimes I play with it later, but my thing is, uh, it is based, a lot of my photography is based on the Yoruba uh, proverb. I'm Yoruba, I was raised in Nigeria. Born here and raised in Nigeria. And it's a proverb that basically says that you should take a picture that your eyes cannot afford to look at, or to place, or to take it. It's, 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 it's um if I say it right, it's it's more like it causes your eye to gape in such a way that there's no amount of money that can afford it. It's just, it's like you really get that shot. And then it's emotional. It's, it's not just the image, it's not Photoshop, it's not any of what the conditions you place on the picture. It was the energy present at that moment. It's mm -hmm. like light. Mm -hmm. If you can capture light. In its, in its own space, that's it. And a lot of people say, you, know, you made me look beautiful, you made me look great. Mm -mm. This is how you look. I just happen to find a spot that you were not looking at. Because mama always say, when, when, you, when you're walking about the street, when you are not looking at somebody, somebody is probably looking at you. They have a different gaze of you. And what more, house music, the most like non-violent thing you can do in this world, go to house party. Like, if you ever want to be safe on New Year's Eve, find a house music party to go to. Even if it's not at anybody's house, find a safe space. And I consider my work, my camera, my personality, I consider it to be a safe space or safe place. I do a lot of work um, it, for the debauchery ball, if you guys have heard of yeah. this. Don't talk about it. <laughs> you know, I do, I do a lot of work before, during, and then after, but a lot of times, people have all these little yellow bands. It's a and they, secret. It's a, it's a secret. There's a yellow band situation. It, like, it, yeah. But people who have categorically said, I don't want a picture taken, they will just seek you out because they can see your movement, and they can see what you're doing with other people's movement. And then they'll say, well, yeah, if you see me, it, I, you're allowed. You know, and that's the honor. The honor to be able to, if you guys see some of the pictures, the honor to be able to capture that movement that you do not actually see for yourself. And then to be pre, have it pre, that's, that's where it is. That's where it is for me. I want to put some of the photos up if we can. Uh, this would be Shay's pictures? No, oh, this is it's in the order. OK. Well, you go ahead, brother. I'm, I'm just watching TV. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Selfie. Shit, stop. <laughs> and the reason why we're not talking about the debauchery ball, peace to Kahari B, is because if you went there, nobody's supposed to know. Shh. Oh, that's that's your secret. The only way you. And there is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's a whole festival. ass movie it's called The Debauchery Ball. <laughs> it's not like it's a secret secret. If you don't, you don't, catch me later. Yeah. Uh, please describe this photo, sir. If you can. So this is an image, this, last year, I keep saying this, this is a new, this is a new year. This is a picture from Chicago Black Legacy Dance Project. Mm -hmm. nice. And this particular, particular young lady uh, it's like in a three county area, I, I'd lose one arm just to be like next to her, just take a few little pictures. Cause she has some really, 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 really dope movement. And you know, at some of these venues, you know, there's no flash, there's quiet shutter and stuff like that. And this is really when you have to wait for it. Now there's a, there's a whole series, I try to tell a little bit of a story in a series of movement when I take pictures, but this is part of a series of, of uh, her moving and it's just as perfect as it is. If the feet were ashy or not, we got shea butter, so everywhere. But it, I really want to capture both prep, you know, as you're preparing to move, whether it's sometimes, you know, I do photography for a lot of African dance companies and I'm in the back and, you know, the prep is there, you know, the practice is there and then, you know, the actual presentation. And this is just me capturing a state between rest. Because she explodes right after that. That's one of our besties. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a prom for one of the children of, uh, of Ida Uh that's, that's Ebony's daughter. Ebony. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's Ebony's daughter. Eva One. That's her daughter. And she went to prom and they were like, we got a four prom. Um, we can afford whatever. Can you just show up, please? Like, you know, you can be at the party and show up and start doing your thing. And so I was like, well, what time is it show? I was like, well, come this time, that time, and that's it. They, they not feed me. They might even show me the bathroom. They just, just show up. And with any work I do, I have to put my all into it because she might go off to college. Or she might go see her. She might become presidential CIA assassin. I don't know. You know. And I make sure that I, I can capture what I can, when I can, from where I am. And this is one of the proms that I just showed up for because there were no other resources to have this happen. And I did it, me and Mario, we got in cahoots for all sorts of stuff during COVID. But, you know, just show up, like, hey, I'm here, the guy just, yeah, I'm taking your pictures, whatever. That's just it. So this is one of those pictures from prom. With some fierce glasses that man had on. Yep. And this is one of my besties, Gose. She considers me and my camera and some parts of my thought to be safe spaces. So. This is done outside, behind the University of Chicago, right at the Willow Trees behind the DeSalvo Museum. Perfect place Perfect for place. it. Yes, so we went out during dusk, you know, sometimes ladies take their time. But we got out there and this is what she wants. This is what it, she wants. She just said, I'm gonna be dressed and then you're gonna shoot and then we're just gonna see. So this was part of my Afrofuturistic sort of series that I've been doing uh, around in the South of the Museum, just walking up, oh, that looks great, let's just shoot. Um, and this is part of that series, and this is just how she wanted to be. This is her alter ego, it's Atsu Datsu. I don't know what exactly it means, but I think it's Japanese, some kind of way. But yeah, but just, you know, just show up and shoot, but be intentional about it. I don't really Photoshop a lot of my stuff. I've been paying for it for a long time, and I use like one application, maybe two. But um, I do color correct because black people got to look black and other people got to look how they look and everybody has to look how they need to be looking. I try to get it from the eye and the eye don't work, I'm getting older, but I think I do a good job, I think. Yeah. I mean, embrace the seat. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah. So you, your work is here in the room. Um, point me to it. And use the mic before they okay, come sure. up here and hit me in the head. It's so the the images that have a bit of um, a drag or a blur to them. Um, they're slightly larger than some of the other frames. Those are all um, 
my image is a photograph from a, a single night that was a, a live celebration uh, for Larissa. Mm. I say Larissa. Just think about her the other day. That's funny. <laughs> that that uh. So in that moment, now that's a heavy moment. It's a celebration and all, but it's a heavy moment because that was our sister, man. That was our people. How how do you? And I guess it's the same in my my in one of my many lines of work. If I have to get on the radio after I hear about a good friend of mine making a transition, and I have to talk, I have to, I have to deliver uh, the, the whatever it is that I have to deliver, right? How do you how do you manage to find that space to do that in that moment? Um, so the the story is that I I, I had I had kind of taken that space away from myself. Mm -hmm. I, felt, um, I think, a little overwhelmed by the volume of work that I was creating and feeling like I didn't have um, the, the time and space to really catch up to myself. Mm -hmm. To Kima's point, I'm, I probably outshoot myself like 10 to 1. So for every 10 you know, sessions or events that I do, I might actually get the time to edit one of them. Um, and that's like being modest yeah. to the point that the joke in the community about me is, oh, Steve <laughs> photographed you. What a privilege. I hope you see them before you well, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I have heard that before, too. I hope you see, yes. I hope you see them before, before he dies. But, um, <laughs> but you I, have some good shots, though. I have some amazing shots. Yes. Uh, and, the, and I am getting to them. I am. Part of that, I think, was doing less, because it was like, oh, nobody. See, it shows up with camera. Um, so now. Um, at, at this space, I was like, man, I had the camera, but I just left it in the, in the car. And I was like, man, let me just you know, be present. Um, so I was there, the, the, the rituals and the ceremonies were happening, and I was, I was dancing, I already got to that point. You know when you, you're getting house heads, you get it through first gear, second gear, third gear, so you've sweated everything out, you know, and you're also in pneumonia weather, but you don't care because your Chicago immune system is forward tough, right? So. <laughs> I got to a point where I just gave myself permission. I was like, all right, I feel like I can give this, this level of witness now. Let me go get my camera. And I'm just going to, I didn't bring a bunch of batteries. I was like, I'm just going to shoot until I'm out, I'm out of clicks. Um, so that's what I did. And I, um, um, I slowed the shutter down because one of the, um, I, I view us in, in the house community and the dancers, this, um, you know, Dwayne talks about this relationship like almost as if the DJ is nothing without the dancers, mm. you know, without the dance community. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the way that they co-muse, they are absolutely in conversation with each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing is predetermined, or nothing ought to be predetermined. Yes. Um, so everything's very fluid and responsive in that way. So I responded and I slowed the, the, the shutter down and started to, you know, kind of shoot these paintings uh, just because it felt it felt honest, it felt accurate, like this is how I see us. We're, we're us, but we're larger than us, we're more than us. Um, and I know a lot of us, not just grieving Larissa in that moment, we've also been grieving our grief, right? We've lost so much, you know? And through that portal, yes, there are things that we've gained and I think we're closer for, but we also have to honor that feeling of loss and I think and sometimes sit with it. So um, I was also, I think, hacking my own grief and my own losses in that moment too. So I, I needed to remember people well. I needed to remember what I had lost well. And I'm, I, I feel like in a moment like that, I'm, I'm trying to imbue that you know, into the choices that I'm making. That's a lot of, that's poignant to be able to, to even, in that, and particularly that moment, and, and, and the, 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 the river of loss that we suffered over the last four years at least, not just, because of COVID, but in the city as well. Yeah. So much amazing gigantic loss. Yeah, those, those are dope, man. And and that you you captured that moment. I've never seen those before, so I, that's that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. especially during that time because I had to have been tough. Yeah. Um, next, sir. Hey, that's Shay. Look at that. Oh, I said I didn't take this photo, obviously. This is um, Basquiat, Bela Cudi, Grace Jones, and Keith Henry. Mm -hmm. I think I, when, when I look at this, I sort of, the, the party scene or the dance scene, I'm, and uh, we try to just like emulate and pay thanks and homage to these 
OGs here. I just, you know, I love them. Don't move it yet. Look at that photo. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason why I said look at that photo, because I know it's getting ready to happen. We're about to look at her pictures. Just remember that photo. Don't think about them being them. Just remember what that looks like in that moment. Keep it, remember it. We'll, exactly. That's a Warhol picture, yeah. But I mean, just look at them. God only knows what was going on in that place. That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. At that time. Can you imagine a conversation and you, what if you're just walking around? Andy Warhol is there, Basquiat is there, Grace Jones is there, Fela Kuti is there. And then there's Keith Haring like, hey guys. <laughs> yeah, Fela ain't there, you right, Gwen. His body was absolutely there though. Fela, Fela was definitely just kind of like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> walked in, walked in. But remember that, because it's important. It's an important reference for what I think is the, the foundation of what I believe Shay's work uh, is. Mm. Mario, yeah. mm. you want to talk about the work this morning? Yes. Because she didn't have it. I know. Oh, okay. You can go. Oh, she didn't. So great. Hi. Um, <laughs> I thought that was coming on the screen. Right. right. We went over this in rehearsal. Mm. My bad. Where's your work at here in the gallery? It's like every other one, I would say. They're the ones, this was also taken on a one night. It was, I can't really describe it, but it's like a party scene and there. It's kind of encapsulated in film. And you just see people in there. Is that one the farm went over right yeah, next so to? That one, that yeah, one. Okay. I see them, I see them, I see them. Kind of every other image. Um, and that's kind of why I was like, remember that picture, because you tend to, at least my interpretation, and I'm not trying to interpret your work, but at least how I look at it, you capture those really intimate moments, right? And it's not a, it's not a setup. It's not a, hey guys, I'm about to take this picture. I need you to stand here and you move there and you think about this and you say that. It's, it's that. It's like four people standing in an alley or something. You also said something that I want to... <laughs> And we're right around here. Were you talking about the blue line uh, train when you said sometimes you go into the L and scream? Yeah, that, you actually, wow, yeah. I was, told uh, you I did my work. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the name Mario Smith, it's like Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Come on now. But you were talking about right here yeah, at the Damon stop, weren't right you? At the Damon yeah. yeah, that stop is synonymous for people going under there and like Scream. screaming, fighting, getting it out where nobody can really see it, and then nobody can absolutely hear it. Mm -hmm. When we used to do block party down the street, <laughs> it would be somebody up there killing it, like the Aster, Mississippi Mud Kings, just killing it. And then a train comes, and you gotta like kind of stop. So the train to go and shit, it was crazy. But yeah, I, I, I see that in your work. I see that intentionality of capturing the intimate moments. And I, I, I wonder, with that 35 millimeter camera, really getting the depth of that moment, how do you, when you look at them after you're done shooting, what, what are you thinking when you look at those pictures? Not necessarily thinking about the moment, but I mean, what is your emotion? Like total awe. I feel like I'm very much a people person. I think I do what I do just because people, specifically black people, are just fascinating to me. So I'm always like, usually I take pictures of strangers or like if there's a distant stranger in the photo, I'm just like, who are they? Like, hope they're doing it. They're having a good day. Hope they drink water. I hope they're like, <laughs> their life is going good. I like, I just, yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, I have a very innate deep love for black people and I have this, this, I guess quest to really document us in a way that it's not really palatable or like, I guess for somebody's consumption, it just as is, so. And I do want to ask about, and, and I'll ask this specifically of you. During COVID, during the 2020, those 18 months of absolute hell, were you able to find it in, your, in, in the safest way you possibly could to go out and still take photos of things, or did you kind of chill? I, this is like my disposable camera era, so like I would just get them whenever I can, and I would always, 
Yeah, just document my everyday life, even if it's not as interesting as I would be at a party or something. Like, it doesn't have to be special. I can just, I could be on my way to the grocery store. I see somebody with it, like, just some family or something. Like, yeah, I, I try to just, yeah, keep it, keep it, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's my train of thought. No, um, you're good. You don't yeah. have to apologize for anything. That, that's what I was looking for. But, yeah. You also did it, and, and uh, to prove that I actually look at work with people, you took a picture of a couple, I guess they were in a restaurant or something, and they were reluctant, according to you, to take mm. a photo. Um, how do you get somebody to kind of loosen up? That particular couple, this was at, this was at a jazz club, um, the Andy's Jazz Club or something like that. Uh, I go there like every week. I see like these regulars. So I think they, they probably knew me and like, they know that I have a camera, but I would always have like this skit that I like just introduce myself and I say like, hi, I'm Shay. I kind of have this thing where I find people really interesting and I really want to document them or something like that. And they, I, that couple specifically, they didn't even speak English. So mm -hmm. it was kind of hard to communicate, but they got the gist. and. I, I guess I just, they kind of warmed up to me just because they knew it, it was no like malicious intent or anything like that. I was just swear. Your photos weren't going to end up on like yeah, Twitter. Like, or <laughs> no, they just, yeah. That's valid though. It, I get a lot of no's. I get probably more no's than I get yeses when I ask strangers for photos. And that's nothing really. Real quick, see, same thing. 2020, how were you able or did you use your camera uh, to, to document the moment? So around then, it was um, uh, pretty few and far between. Um, that's the year I used to catch up to myself, mm -hmm. to really like organize my work. You know, I had text, I had the organizing principles, but I had what I'd never had before, which was time. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know? Say that. So I was like, if I'm not gonna make time, and the time was made for me, I better be opportunist. And um, so I was, and I just really spent, um, you know, it's wild, because I think about, I have to like view a record of my life. Right now, you'll see virtually almost every week of my life is documented since 2014, mm -hmm. since I got my first like DSLR, for real. Then there's a gap that goes back into probably the early 90s or the late 80s, when my parents were actively taking photographs, mm. Polaroids mm. of my life. But if you look there in that timeline, the visual record of my life, you're gonna see this massive gap. Um, and then I think about young people now who are being born in the last five to 10 years, having like every day of their life documented, there's a visual record of it. Um, so I think I just, I'm saying that to say, I just became conscious of, of that record and that gap. And I became grateful of how much of my life I was I had been recording, because it didn't even really register to me until I sat down and had to put it all in a catalog and give it a file structure that was intuitive, right? And, and positioned it in a way so that if something does happen to me, if I get COVID and again, and do the black man, and do the black man protocol where I don't seek no help, <laughs> don't go to no hospital. You did, you did. Like I did one year ago. Yeah, we remember. My, we, we all remember. When my remember. blood oxygen said I was mm -hmm. supposed to be in somebody's hospital yep. a few years ago. Um, should something happen to me, someone, my legacy is, is going to be in this archive. Someone's going to be able to take my work and advance it, interpret it, and give it, and give it life. Um, so that's really what I use 2020 for. Start gathering your thoughts, too, because I'm going to ask you all to ask questions. Okay. To ask questions. I'm sorry, I'm saying hi to people and stuff. My bad. <laughs> to, ask, <laughs> to ask questions of the three of these wonderful people. Come on, same thing, 2020. I know you did because I was with you. We absolutely went and shot things. So just real quick, yeah. we, <laughs> we I, I, am, I am a part of an organization called Wide Awakes. We have a Chicago chapter, Wide Awakes. Shout out to, to Hank Willis Thomas and his amazing vision for Wide Awakes all over the world. It's a million Wide Awakes everywhere, trust me. And we got permission from the family of Frederick Douglass to use this portrait where Frederick Douglass has on a, a surgical mask. And this was right at the beginning of COVID. And I was like, yo, I gotta put these. We got them sent to us from the family and stuff. And I got left with like 30 of them, maybe more than 50 of them. 
And uh, I'm like, I have to put these in the ground around town. So we went on, what was it, 47th? Yeah, 47th. We went where the fort used to be. Y'all don't know what the fort is. Why did I say that? Mario skipped the part where he just called me and say, dude, I need a ride. Like, I didn't tell him exactly what, what I was doing. Like? I'm like, he's like, we're gonna be going up Stony Island. I'm gonna go we're just gonna ride around for we're a minute, stop. and I gotta put these signs out and just, you know, get me. He's like, like, I got I don't you. Do political, dude. <laughs> he's like, no, it's Frederick Douglass. Like, bro, we were trying to prove a point about the mask, but we put them on Stony Island, right on the median, and this was right after the riots had happened. So everything on Stony was messed up, and we put these pictures out there. And we like, we were clandestine where we would hop out the truck, <laughs> run, stick the pictures in, he takes some pictures, and then we jump back in the truck and drive off. And it's a line of, of and I didn't care if people took them. I, did, I really hoped that people would steal them. I was hoping so hard that somebody would just. still have asked me. I still got a few. Yeah. The wind blew it like five blocks away, but I still got a few. Man, I, that was one of the best times ever. But uh, aside from that uh, Indiana Jones adventure that we took, what did you do to document things, if you did anything at all during 2020? Yeah, 2020, uh, I've taken pictures of a lot of people that are currently in this room at this very moment. <laughs> I try to kidnap them, kidnap them, uh, bribe them for, with food for food and promise the potential of food from my kitchen, considering every other restaurant was open and I can cook some mean West Nigeria. And, and just what, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that is a fact. He will pull up in his car and see you on the street and be like, hey, come here. <laughs> take this. I'll see you later. Like, I, I, I didn't ask for food. He's like, take it, eat it. Bye, I gotta go. Yeah, he's he thinking me like, yeah, I didn't eat it for three days. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, I, I try to be as present as I can with, with the things I allow myself to do. Uh, my day job, I am a network computer, Azure, DevOps, you ain't something got engineer, no job, something, something, with, yeah, something like that. What day job? Uh, when you get it, I have known you for a long time. COVID bled me dry. <laughs> I don't believe you have a job. I, Whatever, just I was like saving day. money. I was like, oh, I got some money in the bank. I got some money in the bank. And the other part is like, um, listen, man, you, you know, you're in COVID. You're not like, making any money right now. Like, you sell a couple pieces of jewelry, that's $30 a month. And you need like 2000 so you're going to have a shortfall. So then after COVID, blew it through all my savings, and I was like, yeah, I got to get a real nine to five. And I filled out the paperwork. I realized I hadn't filled out any W-2s for like 15 years. You trying to red fox yourself straight to jail. Right. I did my taxes. They just said, just go down zero. Oh, wow. They said, you got to file something. So I was like, okay. I ain't at the seven year mark, so I'm good. That's Help the phone call. You should have called me and been like, Mario, this is what you do. Just put the zeros down all the way down. They, they, I learned a lot. But in 2020, um, for a minute, I couldn't sit myself still, honestly. I, when they started talking about banning Americans with American passports from traveling anywhere outside of America, uh, I was like, yo, my passport's still good. Where, where can I go? You know, trips to Peru was like 150 bucks. You guys know the whole thing. So I found myself in Istanbul, sec taking pictures of second century ruins because no one was willing to go. So I could just walk around all day and take pictures. Um, I found myself in Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, South Africa. Even when I was somewhere, I was waving the seat. I'm like, see, ain't you in Kenya? I'm crossing Kenya right now. Like, see, it was in South Africa. I'm like, I'll be there next week. Where you gonna be? You know, um, I tried to travel because I, I claim I had this money in the bank that you were looking at me really nicely, not realizing that, yeah, mortgages and all that stuff still do, even if you are at home. But I tried to travel a lot. And unlike Seed, I did not catch up to myself. I had, there was a period where everybody else was sitting down and I was, as a Virgo, trying to tell myself, everybody else is sitting down, you should kind of like sit down too. Um, but I did a lot of traveling. I did a lot of intentional work. I did a lot of Afrofuturistic work, a lot of, a lot of um, presence work, like where people just wanted to be present. People didn't. People call me up like, I want to go outside, I want to take some pictures. Um, some things are going to happen you might not like, but I just want to take a picture. And I go places and take pictures and people just disrobe. And they walk into the water and they just say, okay, I'm ready. And I'm, okay, Candy Crush, go by. And I'm looking up and she's like, clothes are there and it's like, just take the picture. And I'm like, okay, 
I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. You just said come outside. I came outside. So a lot of people want to do a lot of intentional work. A lot of people didn't really care what happened to the picture. They just wanted to have presence. You know, they wanted to hold space for self. And so, like I say, it's an honor. Like the, the panel before here, I didn't get a chance to make my little comment, but I really wanted to, to thank the DJs, Especially Dwayne back there, who, who, who put my name in somebody's pot, like my curator, uh, to say, you know, and, and Dwayne told me a couple times, he said, I got this project I want you to do. I said, it's about this, about this. And, you know, the last time he said it, it was about, like, go and dig up every picture of Larissa you got because it's about to be something going down. I'm like, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. But then this time it was something else. It's about movement. I was like, movement, oh, I like movement. It's like, you know, Jenica, don't you? I was like, yeah, we'll reach out. So okay, so and then this happened, you know. Um, it's it, it literally happened like that. And Jenica's like, you know, these artist people, man, I send them emails, I don't even respond. <laughs> Days on end. You know? So artists. I really had to apologize, and I'm apologizing for my lateness. I just, I'm sometimes I like to just make art. I like to make stuff. But the administration of that, that could be left to somebody else. Honestly, it's I see how the movies. It's, it's real true. Um, 2020, I, I, I really did a lot of intentional things, and I set myself up to do a lot of intentional work. Um, I'm currently building out sort of short of a 9,000 square foot warehouse space studio something where I can just do all my stuff. I can't always say nothing. But yeah, I'm working on trying to do something like that where I just want to open up the house and you know say, yeah, if you've never been able to do this in that space or it costs too much, get some folks, have them cook, make some stuff, show up. As long as I pay the bills and the lights get, we good. So I, I really want to hold a better space uh, where there is space because COVID taught me a lot. If you're not there to capture, it may not really have happened. In, in real life, in your imagination, or hallucinated, you know, whichever you, know, you want. But I mean, people must see themselves. They must see of themselves. And so I, I, I thank the DJs and the producers and Wayne, I've taken pictures of him setting up for picnics, setting up people's sound. And I like to do that. And I like to then take the picture of the actual event. Um, so I really want to thank, because if it wasn't for those events, Tonk and them would hold, or Dwayne would send me flyers, see, we'd be like, we're doing this over here, then I wouldn't be there to feed off of and then spit out that energy. You know, it don't destroy itself. It just, it, it remixes itself. Um, before I take it to the questions, I, it's weird this morning, because I kind of kicked it hard last night, which is why I'm glad I'm sitting still. <laughs> last night was a real thing in Hyde Park, boy. <laughs> <laughs> good, good movie. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> that's terrible. That's, really, that's I, okay. I looked at my planner from 2020. Mm -hmm. I've got January, it's got something in every box, February, every box, and it's got something in every box in March, and then it's nothing. It's like wide awake stuff. We have a meeting, be in Inglewood, do this, do that. But I had like planned out. I was planning a, a whole bunch of stuff for, for that year. It, it, it is a stark reminder of the fallacy of us having time. We don't. We act like we have all kinds of time. We have no, there isn't time. The only thing that is certain is that we don't have it. We gotta maximize every nanosecond because if we don't, we will miss it. And I am so glad that we are in this room together, all things considered how bad it was and how good it is right now and how it's gonna be great. So the energy that we, we have, y'all you know, put it toward, put it toward these 12 months on this wacky Gregorian calendar of it being the greatest 12 months we've ever had in our lives. We earned that and we gotta claim that. And if we don't claim it, it's gonna be gone. So claim that shit, excuse my language. Claim it, claim the greatness that we all are about to have. It's about to be abundance and greatness and we're about to show up and completely show our asses to the world. We are, this is it. 
I had to say that. Um, and it's time to take questions from our audience. Ah, this is gonna be good. Oh yeah. Absolutely. The curator. My curator is better than your curator. Come on, doing the Donahue. He came out there with that mic. Like, hello. Oh, hey. Hello. <laughs> oh, 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 got volume. Um, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. How's it going? Hey. Hey. Hey, baby. Hey. hey. Hi. Um, everywhere. Wow. Anxious. Anxiety is coming. <laughs> Strong. Um, yes. Um, hey. Uh, people have asked me a bunch of different questions about how I feel. And that's like the first thing that's coming to my head and I think I'm just very grateful to be a part of this project, to be working with you guys, Shay, C, and Kimon. It's been fabulous handling your work. I'm so, so very grateful. Um, as soon as I was able to receive your work, um, there were definitely I think there was just an easy through line for me to pull. Um, I myself am a dancer and an artist, and so receiving these works, it wasn't just about a story, it was I really felt the embodiment of these subjects, I really felt the movement of these bodies, and how much care you took with each one of these shots and the handling of how you were operating in those spaces. So I'm just very grateful to have handled this work. Um, I also want to say I'm so thankful to be working with Heaven Gallery. Oh, my Francine, you were so fabulous to work with. <laughs> very encouraging and we lovely. We love you, too. <laughs> we love the whole a Honey Pot and Oh, everything. yes. We love you. Yo, Honey Pot performance. OK. Yes. Right. Can we do Honey Pot performance? Right. The word that comes to mind with Honey Pop performance and um, the Chicago, uh, wait, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess it up. Because you were so good. Chicago Black Social Culture Map. You got it. That's right. That's right. Um, it just, the word that keeps coming up for me with these two groups is aligned. Um, I myself also grew up in the club. My mom was an African man promoter for about 20 years. And so little Jenny was just operating in spaces of movement and artists and musicians. And just all of what you see on these walls is what I feel very natural. It's a very autopilot space for me to be in. It feels like home. So working with these two groups and the handling of that work as well um, was just, it was fabulous. It feels really comfortable to be working with you guys. So thank you guys. <laughs> Jennica, I wanted to say this is really dope, man. And and the 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 OG is not appropriate. If you guys know, when you know, you know. And Heaven Gallery is one of those places that has that has probably been sixteen other places in the Wicker Park history of our lives. But this is really dope, and it's a great place. And like I said earlier, Milwaukee Avenue and Wicker Park kind of needs more of this. So congratulations to you, and congratulations to you on this wonderful exhibit. This is dope. This is really nice. And if I haven't messed it up already, it is time to take questions. Uh, can, I, can I ask the first question? You got the mic. <laughs> this is your stuff. Yeah, I think you can ask the first question. Would that be odd if we would have been like, hell no, you can't ask the first question. Yeah. So the question I'd like to ask you guys is, I obviously know that there's something that you are attracted to when you find yourself in these spaces, when you find a subject. Um, and I guess I just wanna know what is the first thing? Like, is it a noise? Is it a color? Is it a movement? Is it a feeling? What's that first thing that for you, you're just like locked in with your subject? That sound you hear is everybody's brain going. <laughs> right. Joe, Jody, blame him, Joe. <laughs> um, for me, 
uh, specifically, it's really the noise. I feel like I really only go out for the music, and I, I encounter a lot of people that are also like that. So when I go out, I, I'm also like encapsulated by the moment just because I see all these people in their element because they're not really worried about what they're wearing, what, what they did earlier. I'd be seeing people with the scrubs on coming from straight from work to the club just to dance. Like, and I, I just, it's something, yeah, I find a lot of happiness and, and um, so listen. Yeah, so it's really the noise and the, the people. Like I'm there for the music. If the music's not good, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really no purpose of me being there. You're going to um, be just fine. You keep that philosophy, you'll be all right. If the music stinks, leave. And I, yeah, and everybody, like, usually wherever I go, everybody that um, that shows up, they're in the same mindset, so they're not worried about nothing else. They just, mm -hmm. in their own element, and that's what I find the most beautiful. Like, yeah. See you, Lynn. Um, I think it's that uh, that relationship, that conversation that I was talking about between uh, dancers and DJs. Um, when I'm tuned into that, that's when I feel like I am a part of the church. Um, and I just love the way people say hallelujah, like with their bodies. Um, and that's Damn. why- I have to write that down. <laughs> 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 and me dancing, you know, back at them, putting that mirror up is me, you know, trying to learn their vocab, you know, so, oh, this is, this is your language, it's in your shoulders, oh, it's, it's in your waist, this is where it lives, this is, this is your alphabet, right, this is your language. Um, so it's like a learning space for me where I, I participate and I study and, and fail, sometimes I fail. Um, I'm dealing with a health crisis right now that started at the promontory at a house set. Um, the promontory concrete floors are undefeated. Do not test them. Uh, Bro. Do not test them. I mean that. I mean that. One of the only reasons I've been, able, I've been on an editing binge right now is because this lingering health thing has not allowed me to really go out and, and shoot and carry C-stands and sandbags and all the stuff that I take out now. So I've had to sit myself down and heal. Uh, but now the, the village is happy because y'all finally getting your images. <laughs> see, hurt yourself more often, see. Hurt yourself more often. Um, but I, a friend, a friend challenged me. Um, I'll just say this real quick. A friend challenged me to, um, you know, could I describe my work or my the tenets of my work in, in three words? Um, and being an English major, I was like, just three. Oh, three paragraphs, yeah, right? Uh -huh, just, uh -huh, uh -huh. Just, just three words? Three, how do you do that? So um, what I came up with was historical, um, spiritual, and then mystical. One of the three things that describe what I do. And the historical is, is what you know what we know about you. You know, it's what's, it's what's written. Um, the spiritual uh, is what is felt about you, right? At the level of like your essence and your breath. And the mystical is like the X to me, it's the unknown. You know, it's, again, that thing is larger than you. Um, and I think in those spaces, coming to know, my man. I wrote that shit down, are you kidding? <laughs> um, <laughs> you, to your question, I, that's one of the things I'm, I'm drawn into through that language, through that conversation, is to know what is known about you, but then also to witness what is unknown, mm -hmm. and from whence that you draw that power and that force. Um, and that's never going to be uninteresting to me. That's always going to be holy to me, um, special and worthy of uh, my witness. Mm -hmm. I need to. Keep my kids. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Um, well, I'm going to embarrass myself and some other people here, but there are some people here that will answer that question without even speaking. So a lot of times when I enter a space uh, where there's a lot of movement, dance club, usually Dwayne has been there. Asada is coveting her husband, her dance husband, <laughs> you know, um, not allowing, like, your time is up and Dwayne's supposed to be on, your time is up and Dwayne's supposed to be on. And she's waiting for it. Like, you can tell her face, like, I'm waiting. One week. Um, so, and, and, and I will say, of late, of late as in the last two to five years, um, 
I, I go into a space and I look for, for people's energy. I really do. I look for their energy. I look for people um, sometimes in trauma. And they're here because they need to let it out. Um, you know, so they coming in and you can say they coming in. They, they, they are here for a reason. They're like the ER, the house music ER, you know, where it, I don't need anything invasive. Don't be no chemicals, sound. Give me the sound vibration. Give me that frequency. And so a lot of times I come in, I don't really care who's, who's DJing. It's not the point. The point is how are you representing, how are you presenting yourself in relationship to that music? To, to whatever it is. So with that said, uh, there are people who give me more energy than anybody else. They're kind of in this room, and I don't, everybody's top one. So if I come into a space, and Kush is in that space. Yo, yo. And Kush will cuss me out before I even take pictures. <laughs> I don't take no pictures, I don't wanna take no pictures. I don't even look good in pictures. I said Kush. So it took some years <laughs> for me to feel comfortable in my own house with all the doors locked to post pictures of Kush in her movement. But now she don't even bother me, so I don't know if there's somebody gonna jump out of the ceiling and just take me out, but I'm okay so far. Um, Rokina, yeah. with, the, with the red little uh, love you bag. <laughs> she will give you life, take it away. She act like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nine lives thing, she will transfer all the nine lives kill you with it, allow you to kill her with it, and then walk out the door. And Ro gives me so much energy. And she's one of the people that will be giving you energy while you're taking pictures and teasing you too, like, yeah, but you can't do this. Like, okay, well, I can press a button though, you know. But a lot of people, and then, you know, my little, my little, two, 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 two people over, red shirt, Yes, I have captured, you know, and you know, there, there are people in this room, young lad, Dino, you can see back there. Pictures on the wall, like right behind here, she's doing some extracurricular stuff with Erica. <laughs> That's cool. Yes, she's doing some extracurricular stuff. Um, you know, people give me energy I look for, and the more familiar I am with that energy, the more I have seen you dance, the more I've seen you move, it becomes a predictive algorithm, an analog predictive. So I can kind of, okay, she's really getting into it and she's about to really, okay, I need to just be in position. A lot of times I will just remove myself entirely from the equation because some people, they know you're there, they know you shoot, they know photographers lurking around, but they in the moment, you don't really want to disturb that moment. So you have to remove yourself from the equation and become sort of like that photojournalist in the corner somewhere acting like you ain't doing nothing but you're doing a lot because now you have a vantage point which you can, you can capture everything you know you, the energy's there you feed it to yourself you spit it back out you know you remix it you repurpose it it comes out like this it comes out of a video clip uh it comes out as just honor it comes out as just honor you know because you know people dancing y'all know how to move y'all hips and knock people out the way it, it, it can happen. It's, be, yeah, it's been some photographers on scene like, uh-uh, I can't do this. Not with him. My stuff might be on Alibaba somewhere. Not Alibaba, son. <laughs> Alibaba. But yeah, I, I really look for the energy. I look to feed myself. I look to, to give it right back to you. I want, I want a really efficient exchange. Um, and I honestly, like C said, I really want to know who you're talking to. Mm. I really, I want to know, it's none of my business, I just want to see who you're talking to. You know, I'm nosy like that. And my nosiness is in your movement because I intend to capture something that you may not have an opportunity to review. You know, because you really get into it, you know you into it, you know you cut the rug, but you may not see it. And so we're there to make sure that can be documented. Real quick, is, is the Chicago party scene I'm only looking at you because we had this conversation, you and I. Is the Chicago party scene bereft of anything that it used to have? Just really quick. I, I feel like I can have a say just because I'm in the other crowd, but I remember precisely you DJ that boiler room. 
Um, actually, these pictures that I took is the same night that you were there. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Um, nice. Uh, so I, yeah, I think it's it's definitely not the same. It will never be the same, and that's why I'm so nostalgic of a, a time I've never even mm. been a part of. But it was dope. It was I, dope. I would imagine. I'm a little jealous. Right, but we, right I there think, on the street at Red Dog, a lot of. Anyway, let's move on. Um, the people we hear that are here as a result of Red Dog. Right? Who wants to ask? Who I do. Brett. 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 Oh, I mean. Uh, Thank you so much for talking about this, but also, thank you. Thank you. Can we just clap? Yes. Can we just clap? Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. They were heavily into the scene, so I, I, I feel like I just grew up on it. And the the people that are in the scene now, like Zora's in the room, oh, one of my a house head down, yes, but, <laughs> house head down. But I don't know many young young house heads, and I think when we come together, we like there's, we create our own thing, and we it's, it's it's paying homage and respect to the OGs, but like it's definitely it's it's definitely the different precise feeling that you cannot get from like any other anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. C Kiman. You said like there are cancers and Libras in <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I too was not there. Um, I don't know if anyone knows that I'm an Indianapolis native. No, 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 We still love you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Chicago growing up was this like mythical thing. Every once in a while, you know, somebody might steal away to Chicago and then come back with something called a, a mixtape. <laughs> and then I would like be listening to it and like I'll be that bitch with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Your head hitting the ceiling, 
the music is, to my sensitive ears, overkill. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> because I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to feel this in my entire body. Like, like every organ is shaking, you know. Um, but that was my initiation, you know. Um, so I think my expectations also got skewed a bit because I was like, oh, this is going to be every house party I go to. And then it, right there, and then it, and then it was not that. So I started to get a little more context, a lot more experience. Um, but I still saw and felt the through line in terms of like black um, communities where there's you know intimate or sacred practice. You know I could see the through line between that and the theater communities I've been in. Um, I can see the community that uh, the, the connection between other like um, other dance forms. You know like African dance um, and and the rituals that were there. I played Junjun. I was a drummer. I can see the connections between. Um, you know, ballroom and salsa and merengue and kizomba. You know, this, you see a lot of through lines you know, in, in terms of telling that story around intimacy, liberation, love. Um, so, uh, yeah, that that I always feel like gives me a portal and a way into those communities, even if I'm not explicitly a part of them. I don't have a, a long runway, you know? What was the question again? <laughs> Asked about the, the some of the samenesses and differences between these different iterations of the scene. Ah, yes. um, so I'm new to house music. I was born here in Chicago, Michael Reese, and throw it down. And uh, I was, as soon as I was weaned, I was, if you're a Nigerian or African or anywhere from out here, you get drop shipped. As soon as you're off your mama's breast, you get drop shipped, you get taken back home mm -hmm. for a proper training. So I spent my elementary and high school <coughs> years in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, the closest thing to house music, once I was removed, had a little kidney infection going on, and the healthcare system was a little better in the United States. So came back for treatment, my father passed away while we were here, and I stayed. The closest thing to house music coming out of Nigeria was High Life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I loved and listened to. I was a Sunyade man, a Barista man, a Ayinde man, a Fuji man. You know, I was I was that listening to that. So it was really easy for me to transition to house music. It was like there are no words for me to think about, and it's just nice beats, and it's not violent, and it is the only genre of music, honestly, that you can insert the preacher man song, you know, a whole sermon about the, you know, what happens in the wind and the pumpkin got pregnant and all this other stuff going on. And you can be listening to Martin Luther King's speech, the entire speech, and that is one of the, the you know, Martin Luther King misses, that, that's, you know. And then, you know, who's Elvis, and people try to do that, and some this, and they space stuff, and I, you know, but I love the music because it was safe. I didn't have to worry about nothing happening. If, if I drank too much, uh, people would just lean me against the wall. I would slump in the corner, and people would just live their life. There would be eyeballs on me, and I have eyeballs in my dreams. So, but you wake up, and okay, come on, we're going to go to, you know, things happen. I, I like the scene. I love the scene. It's the only place that kind of I can recharge, you know? And like, you know, the panel was talking about earlier, people, you know, DJs, y'all do 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I am 51. Oh, wow, come on. You know, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I still have a, I still think, I think, I may be imagining, I still think I have a kind of a high metabolism, but I've been successful. The one did, and be like, what's going on? You know, she got face. The only place that's over right now. Anyway, that's my favorite place. The one is going to be like, <laughs> well, I mean, but you know, we, we have to recharge. And so I I don't like the fact that I don't like to look for I don't like to look for a place to be safe and listen to music without in my Bluetooth speaker at home. But with house I can find that. Because I you know, see what's going on. Dwayne he didn't already sent me a flyer. Sometimes I would physically call it Mario because I'm a Virgo. I got to hear people's voices. I just, it's just what it is. Um, I forgot to mention, 
pages back there. She did that so hard. <laughs> to the point where I know her orthopedic doctor and I'm a reporter. <laughs> but you know, I've been I've been doing stuff. I'm the only house that you will probably know and understand who cannot dance. I'm a non-dancing house head. I was went to school at the Milwaukee High School of the Arts and they introduced me to plies and stuff and it was incompatible with later house. So I'll move around and take pictures, but if you see me dance, just escort me out. <laughs> that's it. That, that's really it for me. I just, you know, I, I, I like the love, and uh, you can't put satanic verses in the house music, but you can put a preacher's sermon in it, and I can dig that. You know. Out of respect for time, and I don't know what day it is. Because <laughs> again, last night I kicked it. Um, we're going to ask you to just be patient, and nobody's leaving yet, and Dwayne's about to spin. And I, yes! I love, yes! I love to listen to Dwayne Powell play music. It is one of my favorite things in the world to do. Um, I want to thank Kimon and C and Shay, and yes! I want to, I want to, I want to be very, when I say this to you, you all are dope. Your work is amazing. People are paying attention to what we are doing because of the pictures you take. And that's important. Being a documentarian in this moment is so bloody important. Y'all are doing it so well. I am so glad I met you today. I cannot wait to see what you're about to do. I think this is about to be a really good time in our city to have people like you taking pictures. I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm inspired by Shay. I'm going to get you there. I think there's 3,500 new cameras on everybody's list. Um, my name is Mario. Thank you for putting up with me. Um, okay, um, and, and really quick, if, uh, I'm sorry for my nonsense. I am on local radio every Thursday at 2 p.m. Uh, news from the service entrance is 22 years old this year. Uh, and I'm so glad if any of you have bothered to listen to that weird ass program I do. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. two moderators today, Mario and yes. Mary, who was here earlier. Woo! Um, <laughs> veterans in the game, beautiful moderation. Thank you to all our panelists. It's wonderful to bring the photographers. I hope you will um, take a look at their work uh, to, to get a further, closer conversation with you about uh, your images. And thank you, Jenica, for speaking a bit. Um, we want to encourage you again to come out tomorrow. Come back. Chicago Black Social Culture Map feels uh, really, um, it is precious to us to, to map all of these stories because they all connect and it all tells a larger, more powerful story um, that connects the past with the present and what is coming. Yes. So please bring, you know, as Abra mentioned at the beginning, your fashion, your flyers, your stories, your photos, so we can digitize them, we can add that to the map. Um, and also give some of that back to you on a USB or whatever we're doing right now. Um, but that, that work continues. So, and these, all of these, um, thank you Alex for coming in and stepping in and documenting today. Um, all of our, we, we maintain our video archives so you can uh, go to the Honey Pot site and see all of the uh, panels we've done for the past three, four years now. Um, and uh, this will be up uh, in a couple months. So thank you so much. Thank you, Heaven. Thank you, Alma and Francine. Yeah, Alma. That's it. Don't forget to scan the QR code, please. Yes. Help us, help us keep and get more money for this work. Yes. And we also want to say happy birthday to Lily.
get this rocking, we want to help. We're gonna have Dwayne to start, and we want to, like to, uh, folks, can you pick up the cheers? Yes. Are, yes. We can get this going. Yes. Dwayne, it is all yes. yours.